So uh, this is something I stole from the internet because, as we all know, the internet is 100% true. So something that we brought to the national referees that actually applies to any referee that better. Being on time. You know, we do multiple games, and sometimes we're running from field to field. And, you know, a coach, the game is supposed to start at 2.30, and the coach is ready to go, and you're, you're, you're there at uh, 2.25, and you're putting on your boots and pulling on your shirt and deciding what color whistle you're going to use that for that game. You, you've, you've, already set, you've already set things behind because a coach has an expectation that I've warmed my team up, they're ready to go at 2.30, and now the referee isn't. Be on time, vitally important. If you, ever dis if you ever make it to the professional level when you're dealing with TV games, you can't be two seconds late. When, it, when they say go, it's go. And if you're not ready, you're late. Work ethic. Everybody has a work ethic, however, Coaches perceive you by your work ethic. So if you come in lollygagging, walking around, not really paying, paying attention, not focused, coaches, coaches get the impression that you're, that you're lazy and have no work ethic, even though you may have a work ethic. So you have to be perceived as having a strong one. So show up on time. Look like you know what you're doing. Because that, that one, when you show up at the field, that's the one time you get a chance to make a first impression. And you want to make that first impression a lasting one and a good one. Effort. How many do six games on a Saturday and finish it up on a Sunday with four more? It's OK. I, I get it. Money is important. Pays the bills. Gets us things that uh, we want. But if you don't have the effort on the field, people will start to talk, saying, hey, I remember when Rick was a good referee, but now, now something's missing. There's no effort from him. He's not very good anymore. You don't want that to happen to you. Body language. If you come to the field and you're like this and just like going through the motions, coaches won't think much. But if you come in, you have some bo positive body language, you, you look like you know what you're doing, even though you may not, or you're working that your first amateur adult game as a referee, and you're like, I think I'm over my head. But if you come in looking like you know what you're doing with positive body language, that's half the battle. Energy. You have to have body language and energy is together. If you have no energy on the field, if you're just walking around expecting someone to hand you something that you're doing, you need to work harder. If you have no energy, there's, no, there's nothing behind it. Attitude. Everyone has an attitude. Referees have really strong attitudes. You need a positive attitude. If you don't have a positive attitude, you'll never go anywhere in this game as a referee. If you want to be elite, your attitude has to take you. Like if, if JP walks into a room, you know he's a positive person. You know that, wow. I don't know him that well, but I can go up and talk to him because I think he's going to be really receptive to it. Passion. One that really kind of confuses me a bit on the coaching side because you make a decision, the coach blows up, and now you're walking over and you're trying to calm the coach down. What does a coach say? Oh, sorry, ref. I I'm just passionate about the game. Yeah, right. You don't like my decision. Now you're screaming at me. That's not passion. But referees have to have a passion to get over that. They have to have a passion to improve. They have to have a passion. If I'm a great referee and my goal is to become a state referee, that's what I need to do. My passion is to get there. Coachable. You can be, you can, up here, you can be as good as you think you are, but if you're not coachable, if you're not going to listen to people that have been there and are trying to impart their knowledge to you and giving you options to get better, you'll never get there. Look at, look at any great player. They're coachable. They've got there because they've listened to, to their coaches and they've done what they've been told. They may not agree with the coach, but they've taken that and made themselves better. Doing extra. How many referees have a plump in their bag? 
pump, ball pump. Oh. Take take notes. This was the this was this group was lower than the, than the past group. So you show up to the game, and they throw you the match ball, and it's five pounds less. And what do you do? If you have a pump, you pump it up, and you're ready to go. You look like a hero. If you don't, the coach goes, "Oh, great, great. We're, in, we're this is great. We're going to have a really great time today." The ball's five pounds less, and it's all the referee's fault. So if you do that little extra, you'll always come out ahead. Being prepared. How many have extra whistles? Of course. How many have extra watches, extra coins, extra Velcro, extra socks, extra, extra, extra? Yes, you're all prepared. Because you're not surprised when you're like, Whoops, my favorite coin is not in my pocket. What do I do? You go to your kit and you grab another coin. You're thinking referees. You're elite referees. You're one step ahead. You've anticipated a problem, and now you've solved it. Nobody else knows what's going on, but you've solved it. Pathway to the professional level. For me, starts at grade 7. Remember when we got together this morning and Jim said he's looking to take grade 7 referees to the youth regionals? That's, for me, that's where it starts. You're traveling your first time out of state. You're going to a high-level tournament. It's important to the players. It should be important to you. So if you do well at the regionals, they'll invite you to the nationals. And if you do really well there, they'll invite you back the following year.